today's show is Rainbow Warriors. This is a visit with a person of high strangeness. My name is Elijah Sanchez and I will be your tour guide for today. Hey, it's a wonderful opening, Elijah. How old are you? I am 14. 14. Do you remember how you ended up doing this show for us? Um, yeah. Me, you asked me to do the show for you. Do you remember why? Because we had a talk. Uh-huh. Do you remember what we talked about? We talked about life. Uh-huh. Yeah, life. Yeah. Totem poles. Totem poles and spirit animals. Uh-huh. And Mother Nature. Uh-huh. And I said, I have just a thing for you, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's really wonderful that you took our host today. Um, at such a young age, uh, what made you want to talk about these things? Um, I don't know, it's just really what I'm interested in, and it, I just, I don't really know. You don't really know. You came here and you were, knew more than I did, remember? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you said you had a friend? A friend, Paris? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was native. He is Sioux. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they did sun dances, and I thought it was interesting, and just like how the sun dances worked in mm -hmm. his native culture. Mm-hmm. So, so what you know about that, and uh, and what the rest of the family uh, does, do you think that collides, or can you work that together? The family? Uh-huh. His family? No, your family. Um, what about my family? Well, you're a little different. Yeah. In your line of thinking. Yeah. Mm hmm They don't really think the same as I do. Mm hmm I don't know really why. Like, I think about, like, hmm, like, how can I put it? Like, Loud? I think that, like, everything around us is living, and we should respect that, and that, not that many people show sure respect for trees, plants, and animals, and they're living just as we are. Yeah, that's how the whole thing started, right? Yeah. But you don't remember why you think like that, do you? I don't know why I think like that, but I just guess I do. Guess you do. Yeah, and then the other thing I had asked you was if uh, what you wanted to be when you um, got all done with school. I wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh huh. And I thought that was interesting because you ask an 18 year old what do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Might have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, we got an insert. And the insert deals with a man named Benny LeBeau, is his name. Mm -hmm. And his native name is Blue Thunder. Yeah. And, um,. You watched the uh, you watched the insert already, right? Yeah. Okay. Now there comes a time when you when you saw those crystals. Yeah. There is a dark one, and I went to a place, and uh, as I was coming to the door, that crystal called me, and I stopped, and that's how I met him. Uh, you have have you ever had trees and stuff call you? Um no. No. Were you listening? No, I wasn't listening. You wasn't listening. Sometimes you can walk and some say, look down. And there's a beautiful rock or something. Got to pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. That ever happens? No. No? Uh, did you tell me you only w learned about these things, what, in three weeks in school? Mm hmm But you learned about what else was it? Um. Loud, loud. It was black holes and ley lines, yeah. right? black holes. Black holes. So, so uh, this is a two-part story. So this week and next week, and next week we're gonna talk about ley lines and things like that. So you understand that, right? Yeah, I understand. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. So, so um, t take a guess. How many fourteen-year-olds do you think understand this? Not that many. Not that many. Yeah. So that's why you're the host today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we getting ready to uh, to show this insert. Was there anything that you saw here a few minutes ago that you wanted to use as an introduction? On the video? Uh-huh. Um, let me think. 
30 seconds in TV lands a long time. <laughs> it's fast. Well, I thought, like, it was cool how they used the crystals to connect with the earth, how they put their thoughts and prayers into them. Mm-hmm. So that would be good for an introduction. Yeah. So it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be a good clip. But, you know, it was too long. So when I met this man, he gave this to me, and he told me to use it. Um, originally, he was supposed to be here on the 1st of December, but he went into the woods somewhere, and I haven't heard from him since. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you come from Indian land, too, don't you? Yeah, I come from South Dakota, mm -hmm. which is the Sioux area. Mm-hmm. So you had a lot of friends, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> do, the, do the native children go to school with you, or is it like here? They come to school with us if they live, like, not on the reservation. Oh. Because if they live on the reservation, then they go to school there. Oh, yeah. Whereas here, it's everything separated. Oh. Uh-huh. Gets cold in South Dakota, huh? Yeah. Well, um... Blue Thunder is from Wyoming. Uh, he's from the Paiute Reservation. He is a, a Shoshone. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's it's pretty much the same. Um, we're going to have a powwow here next month. You going? Yeah, yeah. I'll go. Yeah. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Yep, we're going to um, play the insert and then... Tell them we see you later. Okay. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. In many indigenous cultures of the world, it is prophesized that a time would come when the earth would become sick because of man's greed. The people having forgotten that our Mother Earth is sacred. At this time, a new tribe will gather from all nations, known as the Warriors of the Rainbows. Of the Rainbows. They will be mankind's key to survival and will remember to the ancient wisdoms on us. Think of all the things that this mountain needs. You've lived here for so long, you know the healing that it needs. All of the bad things that's happened here needs to be erased. And so the message is the Great Spirit. You can do this with sound and vibration. My name is Gina Weiss, and I've lived in Big Bear for 20 years. And we were in our sixth year of drought in 2004. We've had droughts in Big Bear. I mean, it's part of our ecosystem, but uh, the trees didn't die like this year, this this last drought. Uh, that was so alarming. That was the thing that made this, this drought different. This is something I've never seen. We were to the point where it was very frightening. And I noticed little things like the ants. All of a sudden, there are no ants in the trees. Their, their mounds in the forest are empty, or there would just be a few left and they would be dying. This is a part of the healthy ecosystem of our forest. No matter how small the creatures are, they're really important to the entire full scope. We had a good seven, at least a good seven year drought, and things were pretty sparse even before that. And I think a lot of our aquifers kind of dried up, at least that's my assumption. Our, our lake was, yeah. what, 15, 18 yeah. feet down? And even after a, a decent snow, it still stayed down. We had the experience the year before of evacuating. The entire mountaintop was evacuated for four to five days because there was wildfire that actually came within eight miles of Big Bear. Our community was looking for ways to solve the drought problem. The city council, along with the um, water agencies, the Department of Water and Power, and the Big Bear City Community Services District, the regional wastewater agency and even the ski area, Snow Summit, had all voted and agreed to spend quite a bit of money to cloud seed so that we could help our drought and get some uh, water to the trees and in the lake. It was actually going to be um, a half a million dollars over the course of three years. It was $166,000 a year. I had some objections to it largely because it's toxic, but 
Actually, my first objection to the cloud seeding was the fact that at best it was supposed to improve the, the water, the precipitation, um, 5 to 10 percent over what we would have had normally. And as far as I was concerned, you know, 5 to 10 percent of very little is even less. So it didn't even seem cost effective. Then we found out when Joe Bradley did the research how toxic it was and then it was completely unacceptable. Hi, my name's Joe, Joe Bradley. Um, I'm a 15-year resident of Big Bear Valley. I'm a physics teacher at the high school. Um, I worked for a while as a wildlife ecologist in the 1980s. Um, I love this valley and I love this land and uh, I, I've been real concerned the, the forest isn't as healthy as the forest needs to be. We've had years and years of drought, um, bark beetle infestation, um, a fire that actually threatened you know, the entire valley. The plan of, of the leaders of our valley to seed the clouds um, for three winters in order to bring about more rainfall. Um, at the time when I heard of this, I thought if it is something that will bring us rainfall, I guess that's okay. But when I talked to Blue Thunder about this proposition, he mentioned to me that uh, the cloud seeding is poison that they would use poison to seed the clouds and it would poison the land and it would poison the animals and the, the trees and the, the plants and the microorganisms and the people and, and so I was very concerned. So I started researching um, about cloud seeding. I, prior to that, had known very little. And through hours, countless hours of research, uh, I found out several things. Uh, number one, the cloud seeding doesn't really work at all. There's not been one scientific study done in the last 50 years that showed cloud seeding was effective at all in increasing rainfall. Um, the, I guess the sure sign of that is the American Meteorological Society. I found out that as a whole they came out and said that they do not support cloud seeding as an effective means for controlling weather at all. In fact they said it could just as easily limit rainfall as increase rainfall. The silver iodide is the chemical that would be used to seed the clouds and I found that even though the cloud seeding company was saying that silver iodide was not a poison at all, the state of California lists it as a, a hazardous material, a type 1 hazardous material. You can't dispose of it, it's considered a poison, it's a priority pollutant um, by the EPA. So our own Environmental Protection Agency lists silver iodide as a priority pollutant and yet that's the chemical that this cloud seeding company was going to drop over this beautiful valley. Uh, getting information from the company, I found that they said it was insoluble, that it wouldn't dissolve in water, and then I found out that their chemistry was off a bit, that if you have a lot of water, like this body of water that we have here, uh, Big Bear Lake, we could actually immediately dissolve perhaps as much as 660 pounds of the substance. Um, in doing so, the fish that live in the lake would, would take in this poison. Um, we have bald eagles that, that now live year-round on this lake, and they would eat the fish. Um, and so that was a great concern.